Okay, the next set of five problems on the 2016 AMC 10A problem number 16. Let's get started. Uh, a triangle with vertices, whatever, is reflected about the x-axis and then the triangle, the image, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is rotated. At this point, there's too much happening to really remember in your head what's occurring. We should just start tracking the problem by, you know, let's go to the there is a way to do the problem without graphing. It's possible, right? If you're really a pro at rotations and transformations, you know, and reflections and all that, and you know all the rules in your head, all the formulas, you don't need to graph. You can just apply all the rules and formulas and you'll be just fine. I'm going to teach this solution for people who just don't remember those things. Um, you may have an idea of one of them. Like I know a couple, but I, I'm actually one of them. I don't memorize the rotation rules about what's going to occur because they're so easy to derive if you're capable. So we're gonna approach it from that one of people who don't remember the exact formulas. Um, they're good to remember in school when you're taking that particular test in geometry or whatever class you learn that in, but for everything else, uh, just derive them on the spot. Um, okay, so let's graph these. Uh, we have A is at zero two. So um, A goes here. B is at negative 3, 2. So 1, 2, 3, it's right here. Uh, C is at negative 3, 0. So it's right here. And this is ABC. Okay, so let's just follow along. What's going to happen? I'm going to track B's point. I might track the others as well. It's currently located at negative 3, 2. All right, so it's going to reflect about the x-axis. Um, again, what happens with that? Well, it's easy to see when you have a graph. This is going to go down the same distance that it goes down now to get to C. It's going to go down the same distance or the, to get to the x-axis. It's going to travel two units to get there. Then it has to go two units more to reflect down to here. This will be B prime. The same thing A is going to do is going to end up here and become A prime. And C is the same point as C prime because it lies on the x-axis. Okay, so uh, what does it say next? Then A prime, B prime, C prime is rotated counterclockwise around the origin. Now the normal clock, mine's frozen, but you can't even see it. Uh, it travels like this, right? That's clockwise. That's the way the minute hand, the hour hand, the second hand all move. So counterclockwise is gonna go this way. We don't want that one. And just refresh your memory on that. Just make sure you're checking because if you accidentally go clockwise when you were supposed to go counterclockwise, there goes your, your any qualification possibly. So we don't wanna have that happen. So just make sure you're comfortable with what you've concluded and then move on. Okay, so to go 90 degrees counterclockwise, um, it's around the origin. Where is A going to end up? Well, you can just mentally grab the whole graph, including the axes, and rotate it this way. In fact, if you're using a piece of paper, uh, you can just rotate the piece of paper that you're holding to represent that. And so if you do that, this is currently at 0, negative 2. It's now going to be, when you go 90 degrees counterclockwise, it'll be at 2, 0. So that's where A double prime is. Where is B prime going to go? It's currently at negative three, negative two. If it goes counterclockwise, uh, let's see if we can figure out what's happening with a counterclockwise rotation. Uh, notice that zero, negative two became two, zero. Then it looks like the X value is switching spots and the Y value is also switching spots, but becoming the opposite of what it was. So in other words, it would be something like X, Y becomes negative y x. That would be a map of what's going to take place. Now, uh, we can check this here. If we rotate this, this 2 is now right here. And the fact that we were 3 along the negative x axis, that 3 along is now going to be along the negative y axis. So b prime will end up out here. right? Um, and then c or b double prime. C double prime is going to be on the x axis, or C prime is on the x axis here, the negative x axis. It's now going to be on the negative y axis. So it now looks like this. Okay, um, let's confirm that, right? Uh, it does happen like this, right? So negative 3, negative 2 became what? It became B prime is now located. I'm going to erase this because I'm running out of board space here. 
uh, B double prime is now located at two on the X axis and negative three on the Y axis. So it does look exactly like what's happening here. The negative three doesn't change. We didn't really know that with the zero because it could have been negative for both of them in switching, but uh, we can tell now for sure. So this becomes positive two, negative three. The X value doesn't change itself, but it becomes the Y value with the same sign it was before. However, the original Y value becomes the X value, but opposite signs. Again, this is how you can derive what happens with these various operations without memorizing them. If you want, you can memorize this. But for most of us, there's so many concepts that we need on the test that choosing to memorize this could take up, if you don't have enough, valuable memory space, if you will, on your hard drive. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, where are we at now? Then what? To produce A double prime, we got that. Which of the following transformations will turn this triangle um, back to triangle ABC, the original one? Um, so uh, we have the options of a counterclockwise rotation about around the origin by 90 degrees. But let's just focus on what happens to B, right? It, B goes like this. It's currently at two negative three. That's B double prime. We need it to become point B, which is negative three, two. Well, this is just a switching of the X and Y values. That is the one, well, actually there's two transformations I choose to remember. A reflection in the line Y equals X, which is going to be the answer, it does kind of exactly what you think. Literally, Y is equal to X. So this is Y, it's now equal to X, and X, which was here, is now equal to Y. So it becomes the Y coordinate. It's one of the easiest transformations to remember because they just switch spots. Now, what if it was reflected in the line Y equals negative X? Um, I believe we could test that out now, and we should be asking this question as well. That would be reflection in this line. So this one would come down to here. Um, what would happen with point B, for instance? It's at negative 3, 2. It would come up here. It would be at negative 2, 3. So you would see, I'm reflecting this point just because it's a nice point to use. It's so close to the line. Um, I don't want to do this when there's so much stuff happening over here clutter-wise. If I reflected B, which is right here, over this line, it would go right here, and B is from negative 3, 2 to negative 2, 3, right? So it looks like they switch and negate, and that's exactly what happens. So memorize Y equals negative X's transformation, a reflection, remember Y equals X's transformation. They both switch, but this one also negates both values. Uh, and that's it for this problem. The answer was D, reflection about. We could have gone through these one at a time, but good to take a quick check and see if we recognize the transformation. Next problem.